Hello in uh, Michigan. I uh, got your note that you wanted me to test something out for you, so. Because I've told you that this pipe is really hard to work with when it's really cold. I'm going to show you a setting right here. This is a Wagner. Ferno 500. Now the reason that I selected this, I went to Home Depot, a couple of reasons, because people have been asking me to, because I have no idea what they have there. So I selected this one because it has a temperature range of 150 degrees to 1200 degrees. So this is one I recommend, it was 50 bucks. Um, that's what I would suggest you use. Now, with these heat guns, and if you're going to heat pipe up with one, it's not recommended that you do that. It's dangerous. That being said, Zern pipe hates the cold. What I recommend is that you take, if you're in tight quarters and you're a do-it-yourselfer, all you're trying to do is get that pipe up to 70 degrees or above. So throw a ring on it and just heat your hand. If you can get that into that pipe to the same temperature as your hand, you're in good shape. So keep your hand behind it so you can feel the temperature. It's a bad idea. I don't condone it. I'm just telling you, if you're in a pinch, this will work. So I've got it all the way at the coldest setting possible right now. So. Cold expansion zone. There you go. As you can see, no stress on the system whatsoever. So I'm down on the bottom setting. You could go, it's got a plus minus. And listen, I'm not an unboxing and demonstration guy. But all you're trying to do is get the pipe up to the heat of your hand. That two setting is more than you're gonna ever need. When you go down now, once you go to turn this thing off, it has a cool down mode in it. So it just blows the fan for a little bit, pulls the whole thing off. So I like this system. I had never intended on buying it, but since Michigan asked me my opinion on this, I thought I'll do an experiment and do a couple of things all at the same time. So. Michigan, this is my recommendation to you. All right, that'll cool off in just a second. Wagner Ferno. This is what I recommend you use. Now, while we're here, all the repipers typically use this product. It's made in America. And like I compete against the biggest repipe companies really in the world. So my competition all use this valve right here. It's an F1960 valve. It's manufactured in America by a company called Brasscraft. And I'm not sure we're gonna be able to get it on this camera, but let me see if I can get that turned off yet. This particular valve is made in America by Brasscraft. It's what all repipe companies in my geographical area use. It's what they recommend. You can get them anywhere. You know, they're four or five bucks, whatever they are. I don't really purchase them. 
unless I have no choice. Uh, but they're a total piece of crap. Um, yeah, you can buy them readily available anywhere. They install quick and easy. It's a quarter turn valve. It's what everybody uses. I don't use them. I like better products. So these in Southern California area are lasting three to five year range before you'll start having them fail inside of a house. So uh, the Upinor valves, um, they last two years and you'll spend close to 1700 bucks a house replacing them all within two years after installation. They're just total crap. I, I would recommend, now, I didn't realize for the video today that I didn't have what I actually use. What I recommend is called Dahl, D-A-H-L. They're expensive. D-A-H-L, that's what I actually use. Now, this one is called a push valve. And a lot of people think I use shark bite because they've seen me use this valve for demonstrations. But I don't use shark bite ever. Doll, let's try it this way. D-A-H-L, made in Canada. This valve weighs substantially more than a brass crab valve. It's made at a much, much higher quality level. They're hard to get. They're expensive. Um, only your really serious repipers are going to use this valve. The reason is because this valve is bulletproof. Um, do they all function 100% of the time forever and ever and ever? No. Every once in a while, you'll get a one that uh, is not up to the level of the standard um, set by doll and every once in a while you'll get a bad one but this valve right here will outlast this valve 10 to 1 this valve right here manufactured by Brasscraft made in America cannot compete with Canada's doll valve this is the valve that I put in all our houses now that being said, this is a push-on configuration, even harder to get. This is what they we actually use the F1960 connection. But I just wanted to throw this video together for Michigan real quick. So I thought, well, I'll show you um, what valves I use um, and show you the heat gun that I recommend. I never, I have had a bunch of homeowners ask me, to go to Home Depot and tell them about PEX A and PEX B from Home Depot. So I figured, what the heck, I'll just go do it. So, because Michigan asked me to, I got the heat gun, I went and looked at the Apollo PEX A, PEX B, I looked at their fittings, and I gotta say, the stuff that I saw at Home Depot was red, white, and blue, it's all made in China, and it was all worse than I've ever seen. I, it's granted I only go to Home Depot once in a while and that's for drywall products um, I don't buy plumbing products there ever I had no idea that the plumbing products that they were selling there or that the quality level is that low would I recommend the uh, um, PEX A and PEX B products manufactured by Apollo which made in China and Vietnam uh, the stuff made in Vietnam looked much better than the stuff made in China. Um, would I put it into a house? Not ever. I would never repipe a house and then tell a homeowner you got a warranty with this product. If you're going to use it for a 24-hour emergency repair, yeah, um, it might work for that. I just, I, after looking at it, there's no way I would ever consider using it. So, Zern in the cold you can use the heat gun that i recommend and it's a bad idea and and i know that you guys watch these supernova videos where they heat the pipe up and they turn it 
to it's clear to take a kink out. Well, in every plumbing code worldwide, if you kink a pipe, including Upinor, you have to cut that kink out and discard it. Put a coupling or a fitting in. Anytime you heat a pipe up like that, you're damaging the pipe. One of the things is, is um, the extrusion method calls for more cross-linking. And there's a way of looking at that. If you're going to cross-link a product, you want to cross-link it to the point where it meets max, uh, makes the pinnacle of its tensile strength, and then you want to cool it down. And that's exactly what's wrong. If you overheat it to make it more elastic, to make it um, easier to work with, then you're actually overcooking the product. And so that pinnacle of uh, uh, tensile strength is actually gone. You've do, you've come off your pinnacle and you've dropped it down in order to make it more convenient, easier to use. Um, my argument is that you want the structural strength in the pipe and overcooking the pipe to make it easier to use is a bad idea. So those are my opinions. They're not gonna change. Um, all right, Michigan. I did this for you. I would never have done this. I've, I've been repiping since 1993, so I'm going on a lot of years now. I would never have considered this. You sent me a message. This is my response to you. This is what I suggest you use. Make sure you keep the pipe in the ring in front of your hand. If it's too hot for your hand, it's too hot for the pipe. Use your hand as the gauge and uh, be very, very careful with it. Um, yeah, I know that it's costly to uh, heat an entire geographical area or structure in order to get up to uh, 70 degrees or 72 degrees. So if you're in tight, confined areas and you're dealing with the kind of cold that I've never dealt with in my life, then this can come in real handy. It's only 50 bucks. It's at Home Depot. It was the one purchase I was happy to make in the painting section. Painting section at Home Depot. So um, I'm very happy with this um, so far. Uh, the flexibility, having the temperature control, uh, from my point of view, it really, really helps. Um, so yeah, this is one I would use. That uh, temperature control, uh, cool down method, it's the way to go. Um, anyway, Home Depot, 50 bucks. And uh, the Ferno 500. <laughs> God, I feel like Ricky Bobby, man. All right. So um, I hope that would help you out. Remember, if you're going to buy valves, go to wherever you have to to get doll valves. I tr trust me. Um, on, uh, let's say you, uh, you've got uh, 10 valves at $5 a valve in a house versus 10 valves versus uh, $15 a valve. Okay, so you get an extra hundred bucks in that house. But what does it cost you to drive to that house? One time. Spend the extra $10 a valve. Best money you can spend, doll valves. They are just substantially better. You don't have to go back. So if I go to your house, it costs me 150 bucks, just show up. So why wouldn't I just throw an extra couple hundred bucks into your house at the time of the repipe and never come back? I hope that makes sense. So you have a good day.